Fellow campers, welcome to this very special edition of Everywhere You Look. I'm in a surly mood. We just watched six episodes of Fuller House. I have to cuss one of you out who left a very nice review on iTunes. So without any further ado, Rocket Newman, that's the username of the, the gentleman who wrote us a poem on iTunes. You can go read it on our iTunes page. Either search up everywhere you look in the iTunes store or go to tinyurl.com slash podcast. That'll open iTunes in your browser and you can look at it there and all the things and the things and the other things. and uh, Rocket Newman, I might have to cuss you out. Because, again, I'm in a bad mood. Just watched six episodes straight of Fuller House. We're going to talk about it here in a moment, but I'm going to cuss you out right now, boy. Rocket Newman, I feel like you're overcompensating like that, that Maximus guy I cussed out last week. What's up the penis stuff on Twitter, you fucking klutzes? Fucking goofs? Listen, you're just, a, you're just as much of a fucking goof as everyone else is, Rocket Newman. New, is it a Seinfeld thing? Because guess what? Seinfeld fucking sucks. I'm sorry, guys. Seinfeld's really not good. And I'm on a Full House podcast, and I'm saying that Seinfeld's not fucking good. So I assume I assume that you're that that guy. What's his face? The the Newman guy who was in Jurassic Park. You're fucking klutz, and you're not really that funny either, Rocket Newman. Are you a fucking baseball player? Baseball's fun to play, but not fun to watch. It's kind of like golf. It's the golf of the South. That's what it is. You fucking kloof. Again, thank you so much to Rocket Newman for leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Again, you can do so tinyurl.com slash fullhousepodcast or just search us up in the iTunes store where the first thing that pops up for either everywhere you look or Full House Podcast. With that, let's go to our very special Fuller House episode. Whatever happens to predictability Episode 84 of Everywhere You Look, the unofficial, official, unofficial Full House podcast. My name is Thomas Green. You can find me on Twitter at not that Tom Green, And I'm Alex Green, and you can find me on Twitter at the Alex B. Green. This week, a very special episode as we take a first look at the big heaping mess that is season one of Fuller House, now available on Netflix. The reboot starring Candace Cam- Cameron Bure, Bure, Burr? I think it's Bure. Bure. It's spelled B-U-R-E, not B-E-R-E-T. Her husband's Russian. To do what? Anyway. Okay, Ron Cand- And Jody Sweden and, and Andrea Barber. It's like Lady Ghostbusters, but Full House instead. Before we get into that mess, of course, if you dug the song that you heard up front, please check out our friends at Beat Radio. They were the ones kind enough to record and offer that cover of Everywhere You Look, the Full House theme song. Before Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah, don't accept any cheap imitations. (laughs) This is the definitive cover of Everywhere You Look, the Full House theme song. You can download that at beatradio.bandcamp.com or beatradio.org. Check out their new album, Take It Forever, as well. It is great, great, great. Now, I already talked about iTunes before we started talking here. I'm not going to delve into it, but do subscribe, rate, and review. Um, if you want to be our pal on social media, you can do so. Follow us on Twitter at Full House Pod, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Everywhere You Look Podcast, and on Tumblr, Everywhere You Look Podcast.tumblr.com. Now, Alex, this premiered yesterday, <laughs> or not yesterday, we're dating ourselves, this premiered Friday, February the 26th, 2016. What happened on that day in history? Well, the internet was all abuzz with a conspiracy theory that Katy Perry is actually Jean Benet Ramsey. That makes what the 10th female celebrity? Because <laughs> Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga was supposedly yeah. Jean Benet Ramsey as well. Yeah. Um, also, former Democratic presidential candidate Chris Christie has officially endorsed. Chris Sean Christie's a of- Republican. Well, uh, I they're all jerks. <laughs> They're all jerks except for Bernie, who I don't even want him to win. 
Because President Bernie sounds like a John Goodman movie. President Bernie. <clears throat> he burps afterwards. That's that's what I hear when I hear President Bernie. It's like King Ralph, but older. The sequel to King Ralph, President Bernie. Anyway. <sighs> Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie has endorsed Donald Trump as he has dropped out of the race and is now... Uh, to quote someone I follow on Twitter, at no, she twittened. Uh, instead of closing bridges, Chris Christie is now burning bridges. Ugh. Also, one of my students actually understood something, and it was amazing, because he always gives up on everything, and he acts like he doesn't know anything, and he only missed two edition problems all on his own. I was very proud of him. Seriously, this was a breakthrough. Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do, we asked for your guys' feedback on Fuller House on social media, Twitter, Facebook, email, fullhousepod at gmail.com. Yes, Shira, we read all your emails. <laughs> um, but we're going we're gonna to go to you first, because I feel like we're feeling a little different than, the most, than most of you about this. Uh, Fuller House, again, the, the basic premise. And by the way, if you don't want to hear spoilers, shh. Close the file right now. <laughs> I, 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 if you complain about spoilers, I will block you on everything. On Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Yahoo Messenger and MSN. And I will get your cell phone shut down. Because <laughs> I don't want to hear this spoiler alert stuff. You're listening to a podcast about the show. We're going to talk about spoilers. So just Spoiler shut up. alert. There are spoilers. Yes. Basic premise is that DJ Tanner has uh, three boys, a baby, a little boy, and a 12-year-old boy, or 13, however old he is. He's, he's tweenish. He's on the cusp of puberty. <laughs> uh, and their dad died in a fire, I yeah, guess? Yeah, he's a, he's a firefighter, and he all was. we know is he died doing what he loved. <laughs> what if he was, like, eating a sandwich in the fire? Uh, anyway. Or, like, masturbating way too much. We'll get to that later, because... <laughs> There's a thing. Yeah, there's uh, a thing. Um, but what I was getting at is Danny was going to sell the house that they live in. And after they overhear DJ complaining about life over a baby monitor, Danny's like, nope, here's the house. And the girls are like, nope, we're moving in with her. Yeah, because Danny and Becky were going uh, to be moving to Los Angeles to have their own national talk show. Wake Up USA, isn't that what it was called? Uh, like yes, that. Wake Up USA. And, uh, of course, they were still fighting over who's going to be the most important part all these years later. Uh, and Danny was like, you know what? Screw having my own national talk show. I'm going to take care of you. Uh, and then Stephanie's like, no, go away, old people. I got this handled. So Stephanie and Kimmy end up moving in with DJ to help care for DJ's kids. Uh, Kimmy also has her daughter, Ramona, from her soon-to-be-ended marriage to Fern- Fernando. Fernando, yeah. Fernando. Okay. That's what I thought it was. Is that, the, is that the Lady Gaga song? Don't call my name. It's called Alejandro, oh. but they mention a Fernando in it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, like, I was thinking Fernando, and then I was thinking, like, something else, and I couldn't remember which one it was for sure. Yes, Fernando. Oh, yes. Also, heads up, we're, we didn't take notes. No. We watched six episodes. We have not watched the entire run. We watched the first six episodes. Yes. And that's all we could handle, because we're old, and we have kids now, and they're exhausting. Uh, yeah. We had, like, a three-hour block last night. We shoved it as much as we could, and we're vomiting it out now. But let's go to your feedback <laughs> first. I'm going to go to an email from Ginny Hart, devoted listener, friend of the show. Uh, Hello, Alex and Tom. Just thought I would give my thoughts on the first episode. The theme song. Upon first listen, the theme sounds like it was derived from a Play School commercial. But I do think it fits the show nicely. It does kind of sound like a Play School commercial. A bit. I'm a little thrown off by the opening credits because it feels like that, uh... Uh, that show, the Amanda Bynes show on the WB. What I Like About You. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. I loved What I Like, like it About feel, You. It feels like a late 90s girl power sitcom. As a, I, I figured they would have ripped off, they would have derived more from the Full House credits instead of just like throwing up clips. And well, then, like, and, and on the first episode, they actually used the Full House credits yeah. to begin with. By the way, throwing this out real quick, not to interrupt Jim, Jenny's feedback. Um, the thing I was most interested by is the fact that HD 16.9 footage of Full House exists, apparently. <laughs> like, the footage they used for the opening credits from back in the day is gorgeous. 
Uh, and I would like to get my hands on that as a, a video geek. I'd love, to, I, I would rather watch that than watch the four by three pixelated DVDs that we have that are actually the official releases. But anyway, <laughs> back to Jenny. Um, episode one, Fromage moments were the forever, from, which fromage? Fromage. Fromage. Cheese. It's French for cheese. Gotcha. I'm not smart enough for this email. <laughs> fromage moments were the forever serenade and the NKOTB dance. Yeah, we're going to get into the forever thing. That's a... Th- oh, my goodness. Um, that aside, great casting choices for the new characters. The kids are adorable. And I love how the old characters have evolved. The high points for me were when the cast poked fun at Michelle's absence with the epic side-eye. And above all, the side-by-side comparison of the classic and current cast singing the Flintstones theme. Which did bring a happy tear to my eye. And this is what a life this is what lifelong full house fans have been waiting for and I absolutely love the end result. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the next podcast. All the best, Jenny Hart. I disagree with a lot of that. We're going to move on. We'll, we'll get into that. Okay. I'm going to go to Twitter cuz the thoughts are a little shorter there. Um we asked you to give your thoughts on there. Um let's see. There's one way 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 down here. Sean at Sean with two wins. S E A N N underscore seven. Sean, thoughts. Someone who is now very rich must have taken bets on how many callbacks I could fit into one episode. Agreed. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots. Um, someone named JBL Cena fan. Working on third time watching whole season. We're recording this on Saturday afternoon. It's been online for 36 hours. <laughs> this individual, third watching of the whole thing. Of the whole thing! And not to, to criticize, I'm sure this individual, whether female or male, is a very nice person. But what the hell? I'd love to have that time. And then uh, Chris at We're Still Soup. This is a spoiler alert for us, because we haven't gotten to this. Yeah. But I, I we were aware this is happening. My thoughts. Harry motherfucking Takayama. I love that that's a thing now. Yeah. So, You're welcome, people. Yeah, so apparently in a future episode we haven't watched yet, Harry Takayama comes back. But Harry Takayama has been recast. Yes, because the Harry Takayama of old now works as a scientist. So, way to live up to those stereotypes. <laughs> um, and then going to Facebook, there's a lot of feedback on Facebook. Um, yeah, why aren't you guys this active on, on the feedback when we ask every other week, huh? Yeah, uh, punks. Um, Bur- uh, Pal Burgess, very good dude. Um, the split screen was awesome, and I low-key want that bacon scarf, referring to Kimmy Gibbler's bacon scarf. I'm assuming the split screen was the Flintstone deal. Assuming. Um, let's go to Sarah Schaefer, hardcore fan of the show. I love Full House, but I refuse to watch. It looks so awful, I just can't force myself. And yeah, but but later on, she said another comment. Don't read that on the podcast. She doesn't want to get vegetables thrown at her, and I, you just read it. Well, I I'm gonna say way worse things <laughs> about this than she could. Um, Angela Bowen, I'm loving Fuller House so much. It was great to see everyone reunited in the first episode, and how they've all grown up. Jesse and his semen joke, yeah, that was a thing. Caught me off guard. Like, wow, did they just go there? Great jokes. These writers are amazing. The new theme song. I have to say I like it more than the original. It's upbeat and fresh. I enjoy how Fuller House is up with the times. With technology and pop culture. The kids are cute and funny. Especially Max. He's the middle one of DJ's I boys. agree with that. He's by far the best of the kids. Yes. He is my favorite. His scenes with the puppies were cute, cuteness overload. On episode 7 and plan to finish the season over the weekend. Can't wait for season 2. Um, are you guys going to review the episodes of the Fuller House? Yeah, the deal is we're doing what we watched last night today, and then we're going to go back a couple years from now and do all of Fuller House in in depth like we've done with the original episodes. I'm sorry Uh, that you'll have to wait so long. Yeah, hopefully you're still listening by then. (laughs) Um, Brie and Elizabeth, another hardcore fan of the podcast. It's incredibly well done. It took me a while to get used to the kids and new song, but I'm okay with it now. They all did an incredible job. I'm praying for more and more seasons. I'm on episode 9 already, I think. In the first episode, I cried the entire time. Very impressed, especially with my girl, Andrea Barber. Um, Jason Bice, who was one of the people nice enough to help us out with kid stuff. You want to read one of these? Or, oh, I can't. I'm monopolizing the time. Well, you always do. 
How about go- that going away party? The Tanners have lived in San Francisco for over 30 years, and literally the only people to show up were the Rippers. No friends from Danny and Rebecca's job at Wake Up San Francisco. Are these people that reviled? Danny's wife didn't even have any friends there. And yes, that's a thing. Danny has remarried uh, a woman whose name is Terry Tanner, but I don't think they've addressed that at all so far. No, she was on screen for about 10 seconds in the first episode. Yeah. She uh, was... Played by Eva LaRue from CSI Miami. Yeah. And also, I feel like speaking of Latin people, I feel like the, uh, uh, Kimmy's ex-husband, they referenced like it was he in something else also that they kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudged. Like there was a reference to The Bachelor. I don't know. Because because there was uh, there's an episode Ma- where they go out dancing. Well, Max and Val, the guys they were dancing with, mm. are from Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Uh, Max uh, was Candace Cameron's partner gotcha. on Dancing with the Stars. Okay, that, that makes more sense because there's an episode where they go out clubbing in the most boring looking club <laughs> ever. Okay, so they go out clubbing. <laughs> I've never been clubbing in my fucking life. Me either. I've been to a couple bars, but like super low key ones. My understanding is that they don't have like dance offs, like fucking <laughs> Saved by the Bell at these clubs. This club did. We're hosted by Macy Gray, who had what one hit like 15, 16 years ago. Well, I think she. I think she had another one that was kind of popular, but it certainly didn't reach the popularity of I Try. Either way, there's a moment where uh, DJ's dancing with one of the dudes, and sh- and he's like, ha, ha, "It's like you've been on Dancing with the Stars," and and she was like, "Oh well, I don't watch that that often. It alternates with The Bachelor or something no, no, like that." No, she said that she watches it every week, and then the other guy said mm. it alternates with The Bachelor. Yeah, there's a lot. Okay, there's a lot of meta bullshit. And way too much. Way too much. Like, okay, I watch a lot of shitty TV. We watch Girl Meets World. Which you, is not shitty. Girl Meets World is fantastic and I cry it, almost every it, week. Okay, I like it, but it can be shitty. Yeah, it, it can be, but it's not... Okay, like, when I first heard they were making it, I was so pissed off. I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I'm not going to watch it. This is ridiculous. And then I watched it and I was like, okay, I totally changed my mind here. They do get a little too morally at times. Yeah. Just get to the freaking story. I don't want to hear about... Growing up and blooming and blossoming. Well, it is on Disney Channel. They kind of have to talk about growing up. They did an episode about. Doing. But they did an episode about fucking communism. <laughs> that was really weird. Yeah. Um. Like the the, the message was don't be a communist. <laughs> That's, that was the moral. And it was in, in 2016 and not in 1966. Yeah, it was bizarre. Um. But what I'm getting at is, uh. They go. They get meta at times. Like the the they pretty much all but pointed out every single meta thing that they pointed out in the last season of Girl of Boy Meets World already. Fuller House, the first scene they bring up Michelle's fashion line, and then they all look at the camera and give disapproving glares. And it it could have been funny had it just been for a moment, but like it felt like it dragged on for like thirty seconds. Like. It goes from like, okay, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, which would have been shitty anyway, because Full, Fuller House should not have been wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It should have been either, okay, we're rebooting this like the Brady Bunch movie where the whole thing's wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and everyone is... The Brady Bunch movie is so good. Yeah, and that's probably the way they should have gone realistically, but in, like, they, they wanted to have their cake and eat it too. In that it's very much in the framework of of sappy Full House. Except someone put too much salt in the cake, so it doesn't taste very good. Yeah, that's the thing is they, they can't be snarky and meta and also be Full House at the same time. That's where this thing falls the fuck apart instantly. Like this side's the shitty acting and the bad writing and. Which we'll get into in a little bit more. Yeah. We should get back to feedback. Yeah, we have one more piece of feedback though. It's from your cousin Alexis former guest of the podcast, who was upset she was not on last week <laughs> uh, because she used to work at a photo studio when she was in high school. I didn't know that. I didn't know either because she's your cousin. She's... Yeah, but, okay, like, but uh, we don't get to see <coughs> each other very often. Our dads. I'm, what I'm just saying, if you don't know, I'm not going to well, know. Well, I know. Like, our, our dads are first cousins, yeah. and so, like, I would usually see her at, like, New Year's and Easter, yeah. except for when they lived in Oregon because then they didn't always come home all the time. Well, they were but. busy getting influenza. Anyway, so Alexa said, It's just as awful, but I cannot stop watching. Also, Jody Sweeten is gorgeous. 
She and has considering all the meth she's done, she yeah. looks amazing. Well, she's had work done. I know, but still, she she meth, meth roughs you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she is she has aged a lot in certain areas. Th- there are are references to her large breasts. Yeah, but uh, th- th- a lot of them. A lot of them. It's uncomfortable at times. So many boob jokes. Okay, so let's crack into this. Thank you guys all so much for the overwhelming feedback. Uh, very, very awesome of you all. That being said, we disagree with like 90% of you. First episode, the, the, the okay, I don't know how, like, I, I was about to say, I don't know how many of you watch SNL, but like everyone watches SNL, or at least is aware of it by this point. It's 41 years in. Um, SNL 40, they did a Californian sketch. The joke of the sketch, it was a, it was bad, it was a horrible sketch, but the joke of the sketch was and shoving in every celebrity they possibly could, and and the and getting every like woo ah, celebrity reaction they could. That's what the entire episode felt like. And in fact, like I actually my first tweet about the show was we're like sixty seconds in, and this already feels like a bad SNL sketch. Yeah, like every time someone walked out from the old show, the place it's like Beatlemania. Wow, woo. You know, and of course, Joey is still wearing child's pajamas for adults yeah. and like talking about how everyone else is immature. Yeah. I, I, so I don't understand why everyone is home. Did they all end up just staying there? No, because it kind of seemed like that at first. I'm like, why do these people never move out? But they actually kind of referenced at one point that everyone came back to spend one last weekend in the house before Danny sells it. Gotcha. And because uh, at one point, Becky was like, I... I can't believe I walked up and down all those stairs for seven years or something like that because she hadn't stayed in the attic for so long and everyone was staying in their old rooms. Um, and then, you know, Jesse's like, yeah, that's why your butt was so nice. And she's like, was? And it was Ooh. so many, there's so many like references and jokes about boobs and butts and like Jesse's semen joke. And I'm just like, and everybody keeps saying, damn, Candace Cameron said damn. Okay, that's uh, that's like, something we can get into right now. And I was like, I did not expect this from Candace Cameron, considering how, like, crazy religious she is. Yeah, so Candace Cameron had, like, script control over this. Like, she was way more hands-on than everyone else but Stamos, of course. And of you, course. And you can tell Stamos is very hands-on, because in both episodes he was in, in the first six, he sang a song. The first one he lip synced, but the second one he sang a lot of Elvis because he needed everyone to know that he can still sing. Um, but what I'm getting at is uh, there was a lot of talk. Like I had a buddy who who did who was in a press junket thing she did, and he referenced that he was given a list of things that she was not going to talk about, uh, a list of words he could not say, including the word, the phrase "dark cloud," as in there's a dark cloud over this because it's too negative. Okay, I thought I was expecting, like, Seventh Heaven, uh, Carmen, uh, other Jesus-y things. Very, like, not religious, but very much high, high moral type stuff. Well, to be fair, a, a lot of things happened on Seventh Heaven that weren't particu- particularly morally. I wouldn't know because I didn't watch that bullshit. Like when Mary ran off with an older dude. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, like, the first five and a half episodes, every time someone cusses, Candace Cameron is not in the shot. So I figured the deal was she agreed we can do some adult humor, but I cannot be visible when it happens. And then in the sixth episode we watched, uh, The Legend of El, El Explosivo, uh, there's a moment where she thinks that these luchadors, these Mexican wrestlers, are beating up her sons. Well, they were. But... <laughs> <laughs> They were beating up one of them. Yeah, okay. The, the oldest was not supposed to be there, and he snuck out to come see it, but um, his little brother, the middle kid, had dressed up like his favorite lucha. Luchador. Uh, luchador. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, and he gave him his club, and so the, the older kid saw the luchador with his brother's club and thought it was his brother. So he jumps in the ring, and they start fighting with him. And then when DJ realizes that it's her son, Jackson, DJ gets in the ring and wrestles. It was like a tag team with the other luchador. But when she gets in the ring, she yells, let go of my damn kids. (laughs) I'm like, okay, all gloves are off now. We're going to get a blowjob in episode nine, probably. Because first episode, uh, uh, immediately setting off the tone of this 
this bullshit. Um, Becky's going on about how she still wants kids. She's like in her fifties at this point. She's an ARP. Well, all that shit. That's yeah. The, things were still on my tweet. Uh, I was trying to think of something else and I couldn't get there. So she can almost collect social security. <clears throat> um, and Uncle Jesse replies, "Well, the, that boat sailed. In fact, it sunk. All seamen down." What the fuck? It's it makes life hard for people like us. <laughs> Like the joke of our podcast. It pod- makes life hard. Apparently it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> um, like the joke of this podcast is that we're pointing out all the fucked up shit that's happening on a G-rated show. Although I think a lot of people get the impression that we really hate Full House, but we don't. I don't really like it anymore. Well, okay, well, when we started this, we both actually really liked Full House. Like, I can't... But, like, but as Tom has mentioned several times, it was not meant to be watched critically. Um, but apparently, we have created a cynical, jaded Tom who no longer likes Full House. Like, I don't even want to, like, watch it with my brain off anymore. Because I, 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 it's like I have to start thinking about it for, for some reason. Um, but it makes our life... Because we are here to point out the fucked up stuff in between the lines. And when you're there just, like, cussing and talking about semen and stuff, like, we can't do that anymore. So, I'm sorry. Um, what else? There was one episode, was it, uh, it's the one, it's, like, the fourth or fifth one where uh, the, the Kimmy's daughter gets broken out of school. The first scene, the, 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 older, the older son of TJ's. Jackson. Comes downstairs and he's talking about how he's, he was up all night eru- erupting his volcano, to which Stephanie replies... TMI. So, I mean, yeah, okay. One hand, yeah, we're, Uncle Jesse makes, makes a joke, says the word semen. It's, it's creepy, it's bad, but whatever. Now we're joking about 12-year-olds jacking off all night. Like, it's garbage juice. I'm not, I'm not offended by it, I just think it's shitty writing. Um, again, either be sweet, uh, sappy full house, or make fun of Full House. Or be cynical. Be the 94 Brady Bunch movie. You can't be both. There, There's just way too much cheese and way too much trying too hard to be edgy. Yeah. And it does not combine well. They're trying to appease people like us while, always, while also trying to appease people who like genuinely love Full House. Like, again, like Alex said, we came in here liking it. But we weren't, like, devoted. Oh, my goodness. Full House is the only thing I watch. I mean, I, I've always loved Full House. Like, I mean, it's hardly the only thing I watch. But I always have, like, good memories of it. Because I've always associated it with my grandma. Like, and, like, I, I mean, like, I have that full, like, the Michelle Tanner doll. You know, like, I have been watching Full House basically my entire life. And, like, I mean, I do love it. But... I mean, I definitely, like, watching it for this, I mean, it really makes you rethink, like, how was this, like, on air (laughs) for as long as it was? Yeah. Like, okay, you're on Netflix. You don't, you're not rated by any, by any television board anymore. It doesn't mean you have to cuss. Uh, I think someone said ass at one point. I think so. Yeah. Like, and again, it's not coming from a, a point of being offended. It's coming from a point of, this is, the show is a mess, a complete mess, because it's wanting to be everything that everyone wants it to be, that cares remotely about it. Whether it be people like us who just want to see it, make, make fun of itself. Uh, and but, I will say, the first episode, complete crap. Oh, it's all-time legendary garbage. Like, it got <laughs> much better after the first episode, but the first episode, like, I, I actually looked at Thomas like, I, I can't even with this, like, because it was so bad. Like, I mean, like we mentioned, you know, like, the whole making a huge deal out of everybody coming into the kitchen, and it was like they were trying to pull mm. anything they could from no. Full House Yeah, in. like, you, 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 you made the joke on Twitter, and I, I referenced us enough already on here. But it really felt like every time someone came out, it felt like one of those SNL reveals, like a few weeks ago, the Bernie Sanders thing, where just all of a sudden a famous person walks out and we all go, woo, and that's, that's it. That's like, there's no joke. There's no punchline. It's just, oh, hey, here's a peep. There's a person that you used to know, you know, that's, that's all they did. Um, 
And I mean, I credit to them for like getting some of the details that they did. Like, for instance, they didn't have to hire the original Rick, Nikki, and Alex. Nobody knows what the fuck those kids looked like now, but yeah. they did. And they're the shittiest actors on the planet. <laughs> they were my favorite part of the first episode. <laughs> also, again, again, this is a shitter get off the but, pot. But, but to be fair, they also haven't acted since they were like three. Exactly. But yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Don't hire them. Don't bring them back. They aren't actors. Like, um, but what I was getting at yeah. was shit or get off the pot. Either go all the way with the joke you're trying to allude to or don't allude to it at all. They were potheads. Like, clear as day, stoner, pothead, surfer junkies. They've been in college for six years. Yeah. And they still have, like, what, one semester to go, yes. I think. Um, though I can't really say much about that myself. But, uh, like, they were wearing, like, the little, what's the hat, what are the hats called? Like the tobog, not toboggans. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to the hats. The the little like hipster like knit caps and a beanie. Yeah, a beanie. Which is basically <coughs> a toboggan. Yeah, and and they, all they talked about learning was how to surf. Yeah, like either either like either have them be full on potheads or don't even reference it. One or the other, because it's not it's in this muddy middle ground where they're not even alluding to it. They're just, like, putting out different, like, pothead details and then figuring that you'll not even connect the dots. But it's not an, it's not an illusion joke because it's not that clever. It's like, it's like a Picasso of a stoner. And they're expecting you to figure out just by looking at, oh, yeah, they're potheads. Like, it's the, I don't know. Jokes, the, the, every, like, without fail, the... The only joke in all six episodes that hit with me, and it was because it was so fucking insane, and it didn't, it went so far off the not making sense scale, that I thought it was amazing in its, uh, in its perverseness and its nonsensical nature, was when, Uncle, when Joey was like, hey guys, you want to hear an impression of Neil deGrasse Tyson farting? And then he, and then he just makes a fart noise. I'm like, okay, that's fucking funny. <laughs> The rest of this shit is horrible. That's funny. <laughs> Let's do more of that. Yeah, but uh, speaking of, of growing up to become things, uh, we find out what has become of all of the Tanner, Kitsopoli, Gladstones. Um, as previously mentioned, Danny and Becky are getting their own national show <laughs> in L.A. Uh, Jesse was put in charge of the music for General Hospital. Which they don't reference at all other than to have the joke in the first scene. That because for those of you who don't know, John Stamos was on General Hospital. Yeah, they, they did this whole bullshit wink wink nudge nudge you know, thing. They always hire the best actors. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, Jeff Franklin. <laughs> we get it. We, we get it. You're, you're wanting to, to thumbs up and wink wink all the, the middle the mid to late 20s folks. Grew up watching your bullshit. Well, guess what? I'm winking and I'm nudging back and I'm saying no. Joey has been in Vegas for a while. Do you want like six shows a week? I think they said yeah. something like that. That Wayne Newton deal paid off. Yeah. Twenty years later, uh, DJ is a veterinarian. Uh, as as mentioned, Michelle has a fashion line in New York, and Stephanie is a globe trotting DJ who goes by the name DJ Tanner to piss off DJ. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So they could have picked anything. <laughs> Stephanie could have been a pop star. She could have been a backup dancer. Like, all of these things I'm describing, they're, I could realistically believe that she's she a... She totally could have been a backup dancer. Stephanie Tanner had moves. Yeah, and they, they show them off in this episode. She's still a good dancer. But she's an EDM house DJ. FYI, there's like three of those on the entire planet who get booked outside of one club in their hometown. <laughs> Yeah, and, and she ends up getting to go on at Coachella. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she she references hanging out with Rihanna in, like, France. And uh, what else? She referenced some other pop star that she hung out with. Uh, Nicki Minaj or Ig Iggy Azalea. Yeah, Iggy Azalea. And Iggy like, Azalea gave her an extension in the bathroom <laughs> at Coachella. I'm like, no, the farthest that anything that, that this could have possibly gone is maybe you played next to a club that Ben Queller was at and he threw up on you. That is as far as you get in the celebrity food chain. That would a... still be pretty sweet, though. I love Ben Queller. He's so cute. But that's as far as you fucking can hope to get as the, one of these shitty house EDM bullshit DJs. And in, like, her set, like, I'm not, like, a big DJ. I'm not, like, a big house music guy. 
but her 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 setup is just like an Apple laptop and an electronic scratch deal, like an electronic uh, turntable. And then not not only does she do that, she FaceTimes DJ when uh, there's an issue because Stephanie was going to give Max a lucky scarf for his trombone performance that evening. Yeah. Uh, of the the doc and old McDonald. And she still had the scarf when she went to Coachella. So DJ FaceTimes her and is like, dude, what the hell? Like, you have the scarf. So somehow Stephanie hooks her phone up to her DJ setup so that Max is projected on this screen. And he plays the trombone for Coachella fans. And everyone chants his name at the end. FYI, that's not how any of that shit actually works. So she had her phone hooked up to her laptop to charge it. Okay, I'm, it was a it was a USB cord. It was a charging cord. Um, you can't okay and unless every screen in the in the field was connected uh, via an HDMI cord to her laptop and was already projecting her laptop screen up on the screens. There was no way that could have happened. But no, just all of a sudden she's like, "Hey, Max, wait a second. She clicks a button and he's projected to like. 50,000 people at Coachella. Yes. She stops her set so that this kid can horribly play the trombone while, she, while she sings Old MacDonald. <laughs> like, that's the most realistic part, because let's be real. A lot of those turds that go to Coachella would be into that. Oh, <laughs> man, this is, this is like next level shit, man. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's not how any of that could work. It's like fucking magic. She's like a, a witch doctor. Is that her like real job? Because here's like, so she's a supposedly like this famous house DJ that can like go across the world and do whatever. She doesn't play her first set until like five episodes in, and that's only because somebody got sick and broke their arm or something. Well, she was she was taking time off. She had like a full schedule booked. Like they mentioned in the first episode, she was supposed to be in Brazil like in the next day because she got bumped up to first class or something. But she stopped and canceled everything to help take care of the kids. Because she is the Uncle Jesse of Fuller House. And here's my thing about that is she would have been broke and in debt yeah. because uh, musicians in general, but especially fucking DJs, if they aren't on the road, they're not making money. Well, and she is. They reference that later, too, because she ends up... Um, Agreeing to help out at DJ's vet clinic one day, and she had gone to the coffee shop ahead of time and didn't have any money. And so when she walks into the vet clinic, she's like, okay, when do I get paid? Because she needs money. And DJ's like, after you do work. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's the, the, the Stephanie bullshit is maybe the most offensive. And there's <laughs> a lot of offensive shit on the show in terms of, not in terms of language. There's, and there's nothing in terms of language. Yeah, they use bad language for Full House, but none of it's fucking offensive. But in terms of like common not, like sense, common knowledge and common sense, yes. Oh, and uh, so I mentioned that Kimmy is has been married to this dude named Fernando, right? And he's like this Casanova style Latino dude who sleeps around on her all the time, which is why they're getting divorced. But he just cannot like let go of Kimmy, and I'm just like, okay, a how did Kimmy land this dude? B, he, like, mentions that she's got, like, extensive knowledge of the Kama Sutra, and Joey looks, like, super into that. And I'm like, that's really, really creepy, Joey Gladstone. Like, keep it in your pants. Well, it kind of goes along with the episode a couple months ago that we watched. Where they have the dream. Yeah, where yeah. Joey wants to fuck Kimmy Gibbler. <laughs> like, of all the all of the callbacks that they, like, shoved down our throats. And boy, were there a lot. That was, like, the most subtle and I'm sure they didn't even mean it. Yeah, it, it was just a glance. Yeah. Like, but it was like, like an th- oh, really? Glance. That's that's how you do callbacks. You don't you don't have a character go exposition, 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 callback. You know, you just have someone like look at someone else. Boom, there's your callback. That's it. Um, first episode, we got to give a little more love. By love, I mean hate too. Um, it's awful. It was. It was we very we awful. only talked about the first scene, um, as Jason Bice brought up on our Facebook page. Oh dear lord! So they 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 throw a going away party for the house. <laughs> Has anyone? Okay, there are two things. I, there are two instances of me ever hearing anything about this, and one of them wasn't really this in the movie Sisters. 
uh, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler's characters throw like a reunion party for like all their high school buddies before their parents' house gets sold. But that's not really like this. That's more for them. They're throwing a going away party for the house. Like, no, they're throwing a going away party for Danny and Becky and Jesse. But no, people don't. Which do is that. why all the Rippers were there. People do that. Mm, not not anymore. Like when we were supposed to move to Florida, we kind of had a little one where we all went to Red Robin with our friends and yeah. ate a bunch of food. Yeah, and then that didn't happen. Um, but what I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I, it, it felt like something that people don't do. Like most of this shit. I would totally do that. <laughs> But, but I just like an excuse to throw a party. Yeah, but like they throw, they throw like a big, like it's big in terms of expense, in that they have way too many balloons and decorations. Well, well, well they hired Kimmy Gibbler, party planner, to help plan the party. Because and, yes, Kimmy Gibbler is a party planner. And DJ Tanner, as in Stephanie Tanner, not as in DJ Tanner, um, is DJing the event, and she's like using a microphone in their living room. To broadcast her voice. For her family and the Rippers. And, and, as and if, Steve. Yeah, as if they need that. Yeah, Steve's back, by the way. He's in the first two episodes. And Steve is apparently a podiatrist. And I'm just wondering, how did Steve become somebody with a medical degree? Like, Steve could not focus on his studies. Steve was always shoving food in his face. I'm sure he went to college on, like, a wrestling scholarship. But, like, a podiatrist? Like, Steve is the kind of guy who becomes, like... A pedophile? <laughs> I was going to say an accountant, but I don't think he could put in that much work either. Like... You just insulted your cousin Alexis so no, I did fucking not, I bad. I did not insult her. I said it takes a lot of work, and Alexis hey, works really hey, hard. Hey, Alexis, FYI, Alex thinks that your job's not nearly, nearly as important as a podiatrist. I didn't say that. I just said it doesn't, it doesn't take as much, like, education to become an accountant as it does to become a podiatrist. Yeah, Alexis, you don't have to be so smart. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not insulting Alexis. Okay, but, like, Steve seems like he needs a job where he doesn't really have to put in any effort. You know, like... Which is why I said not an accountant because an accountant. Why didn't you say like a truck driver, a construction well, I, worker? Well, I think more more than a truck driver, a construction worker maybe, or like somebody who like works. Um, I don't know, just not a podiatrist. Yeah. Well, I'm sure maybe that was a thing because apparently it was very hard to get him to do the show. Uh, Scott Weinger, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. AKA Aladdin. Yeah, he's, he's actually like really fucking successful. Like, he's a really successful sitcom writer. He does a lot of stuff. Uh, Blackish, uh, what was that? That what was that ABC show about the aliens. Oh, uh, uh, the neighbors. Yep, he did. He was the head writer on the neighbors. He's currently hardcore involved in, in with the uh, uh, Blackish show. And which, he was Aladdin. Yeah, which apparently there's a big what to do because uh, the gal who voiced uh, Jasmine. Has her like deal up on the Disney Walk of Fame, but Scott Weinger doesn't. The one who did the voice, the one who did the singing voice. I don't know. Because if it was Leia Salonga who did the singing voice, she also did the singing voice for Mulan. So she kind of did a lot. I just know that I I was listening, I believe it was, he was on some Earwolf show. Because Linda Larkin was the normal voice. Uh, Scott Weinger was on some Earwolf show a few months ago and he was complaining that. Oh, hey, all my co-stars have Disney Walk of Fame stars, and I don't. Which I find, because he was, like, really, because he was the only one from the movie, he said, that Who came was back, on the show. Who was on the show, yeah. but he came back to do the video games. Uh, apparently, there's a bunch of, like, other stuff, like, the commercial stuff that he did that none of them came back for. Uh, he was, he seemed kind of, like, upset about it. Uh, well, I would be, too. Um, But what else were we getting? He's there, and I'm just, I'm stunned at, again... He, they had to do a lot to get him back, and he just kind of pops up and is like, "Who do you? I love you." That's it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, I know you're not ready to date, but when you are, like, <laughs> I'm GTF, dude. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, her husband like just died. Like, chill. Okay, yeah. stop coming on so strong. Also, how did Kimmy Gibbler become a party planner? Kimmy Gibbler's like the least organized person ever. It came off like a spoof of all the shitty uh, stay-at-home mom party planning companies that pop up in like small towns which doesn't make sense because they're in san francisco but like every small shitty midwestern town i feel like has 10 like middle-aged moms who are like oh i'm bored i'm gonna throw a party planning company i would totally do that and they just like make a couple banners and 
Kimmy has a fat head of her face, which is her logo. Most people, it's like her most, head. It's not. It costs like ten bucks to get a fat head. It's not that much. I uh, should get one of you. I get a whole, and use it to frighten people. Like, see, that came off a kind of a subtle, subtle joke than most. That Kimmy is just doing this as a front to not have to actually do shit with her life. Because uh, uh, there's an episode where she's also a really shitty mom. We find out, but. What else can we discuss? In the um, we, we, we haven't talked about the forever sing-along yet. Okay, so going back <laughs> to the first episode at the party. Which is like the worst part of the episode. Yeah. Which so, is full of horrible things. So, all like, out of nowhere, uh, 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 what's her face? DJ, DJ Tanner. Yeah. Stephanie. Stephanie <laughs> is like, hey, we're going to throw back to 1992. Jesse and the Rippers one hit while all the Rippers sit over to the side and like cry or something. <laughs> and she starts playing forever. And then Jesse starts singing. And by singing, I mean John Stamos lip syncs. Although he, he tries to get out of it at first because he's tired of it. Yeah. He spent all those years in Japan singing that song and he hates it, damn it. He hates it. Yeah. And um, Becky's like, um, that's our wedding song. And he's that, like, okay. That being said, they did record a new version. You can, because it's, because Stamos' voice has changed. It's obscure. Yeah. Uh, actually, Stamos' voice has gotten higher. Oh. Most people, when they age, they their voices get lower. Just because of all the wear and tear that happens to your vocal I wasn't friends. paying that much attention to it because I was just so horrified that it was happening. But yeah, Stamos sings the entire first verse and chorus by himself. And then Lori Laughlin joins in. And then... Everyone, everyone joins, joins in. in. And I'm just like... Why? But yeah, life Why? Life fucking stops so that everyone can sing forever together. And guess what? Everyone on the cast can sing, apparently. Yeah, Jody Sweeten ends up uh, singing Time of My Life with... Uh, well, I was going to get to that. Oh, sorry. Um, well, the, 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 I've the, had the, 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 Time of My Life. The, the joke, I was uh, the thing I was trying to get to was that this was like Saved by the Bell when they did the Zack Attack thing. Yeah. Where everyone's clearly lip syncing to like studio singers. But yeah, everyone at the party can harmonize perfectly. It's and it feels like a fucking Disney sing along. It's horrible. It's not in any way. It's it's for it's completely forced and awful and very full housey in that way. But like next level full house. Like they went from oh we're gonna nudge nudge wink wink and make fun of the show to doing the most full house thing imaginable. Like five minutes later. Again, you can't you can't bake your cake and eat it too. You gotta serve it to others, assholes. But what Alex is getting at, I'll let you go ahead. Uh, yeah, when they're at the club, uh, DJ and Kimmy really want to beat Fernando and his hoe of the week uh, at the dance competition, and so they decide to do their dirty dancing routine from middle school, and uh, or maybe it was elementary. I don't know. At one point, they did it for a talent show, and Kimmy was dropped when DJ couldn't complete the lift. Yeah, and they, they were talking about it like it was a reference to something, but that was never on yeah. the show. Other than their dirty dancing and Patrick Swayze obsession. Um, and so Stephanie's like, hey, Macy Gray, sing the song so they can do the dance. And she's like, well, it's a duet. And Stephanie's like, all right, I got this. And Jody Sweeten has some pipes. Like, I was actually pretty impressed. Are you... Uh, I don't think that's all Jody Sweeten. Well, um, well, I almost like tweeted about that. Like, if it's her, but whoever was singing, I I was actually impressed with. Yeah, like I'm sure I'm sure she sang, but I'm getting it. They probably tweaked, tweaked it, it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, Macy Gray fucking pops up, like such a relevant reference. Like, and she's under the influence of oh, like something. totally like drunk or something. Yeah, like, I'm not sure if the joke was that, hey, because they, they, a couple of times she references how shitty her career is now. So I'm not sure if the joke was, hey, she's supposed to act drunk because she's, like, depressed. But if she, it is, she's the best fucking actress to ever be on a Jeff Franklin show. Like, she was, yeah, there, it was concerning how off she was. Oh, uh, we also find out that Comet at some point impregnated another golden retriever. Probably in that episode where the uh, dogs run off together. Yeah, uh, uh, he had puppies, uh, and then that Comet Jr. also had puppies at some point because Steve is the owner of Comet Jr. Jr., who was about to have puppies. Yeah. <laughs> 
And first of all, okay, I am heavily involved with a local animal shelter and I work extensively in, well, not as extensively as um, one of the other ladies who like devotes like all her spare time to it. And she's amazing. Um, but I help her out with spay and neuter outreach events. Um, it, it's very important to spay and neuter your pets. I don't want to like be all Bob Barker here, but seriously, do you have any idea how many dog and cat lives you can save by making sure that your pets are not populating the earth anymore? Um, because it's a lot. It's quite a lot. Plus, isn't there like a cancer risk for not cutting that stuff um, out? With females, there is um, a big risk. I think it's called pyometria. It's uh, something like with the uterus that's horrible and horrible and horrible. Um, so yeah, it's especially important for female dogs to get spayed. Um, but why was he not neutered in the first place? Why did they continue to just keep breeding? Like, are they like weird, like backyard breeders or something? Mm. Like, I don't get it. And why do they keep naming all the puppies Comet? Like Comet, Comet Junior, Comet Junior Junior. Like, uh, Max ends up being able to pick <laughs> out one of the puppies after Pester and DJ about it forever. And he at least names it Cosmo. Like... Thank you for not naming it Comet Junior, Junior, Junior. Like, can you really not think of any names for your dogs? Our dog's name is Archie. His parents were not named Archie. He wasn't even named Archie when we got him. His name well, was Rocket. Keep in mind but... that all the characters are really dumb people. So, um, what else can we crack into? It just into? drove me crazy. Okay, you know what we can crack into? What? This is maybe my spotlight. Because um, a few people tweeted me last night while we were tweeting about the episodes we watched. Um, so, as mentioned, there is an episode where everyone goes to a Lucha Libre Mexican wrestling event. And, again, let's lay out the scenario for you one more time. So, the youngest boy, or not the youngest, but the middle boy, who's like six or seven, dresses up like his favorite mini wrestler. Mini wrestler meaning like a dwarf or a little person. Um, and he has the best costume at the costume party, so he, or that cost, but the costume contest, so he wins a prize and he gets to hang out with the mini. And then when the older boy gets there after sneaking out because he was grounded for, for imitating jackass. But yeah, let's stop there for a second. <laughs> oh, that's when they said ass because Candace Cameron was mm -hmm. talking about jackass. Yeah, which I think is more like you can get away with not being like, oh, that's a, because ah, technically jackass is a donkey. Yes, which is why our seventh grade science teacher let us say it in class, and we all mm. thought we were awesome. Um, but, yeah, he, he has a jackass phase in the year 2016, where he's, like, jumping off of roofs. It's almost like backyard wrestling. That was a thing that was also popular at the time. And you would know. I, um, but <laughs> they go to the Lucha Libre event, which is based off of these uh, variety shows in L.A. called Lucha Vavoom. Uh, my understanding is, like, a bunch of the writers from Fuller House were are, like, regulars at Lucha Vavoom shows. And, and this was called Lucha Kaboom. Lucha Kaboom, which couldn't be more blatant. Um, but so the mini, actual mini that uh, the little boy Max is dressed like is in the ring doing a match with these crazy chicken characters. And the older boy is like, oh, that's my brother in the ring. Because he didn't realize that... He was, his little brother had dressed like an actual wrestler. Well, his brother had decorated the club specifically in a specific way. And the luchador was like, oh man, that's even cooler than mine. Do you mind if I use it or whatever? And he's like, yeah. So the club was different. That's why he thought it was his brother. But still, your first thought wouldn't be, oh man, my, my, my six-year-old brother is in the wrestling ring. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Also, I'm not sure if they, like... It felt like they weren't treating it like wrestling was real. And then all of a sudden, they act like the six-year-old boy is getting beat up by grown men. Like, granted, they didn't show anyone throwing fists or anything at the mini person. But yeah, then the 12-year-old gets in the ring, and they actually start beating him up. Like, granted, again, pro wrestling style, but there are fists thrown, and the illusion is that violence is happening from adults to a 12-year-old boy. So then Candace Cameron jumps into the ring like they had no security to stop it and she proceeds to a do like good looking professional wrestling choreography like shockingly good because b she didn't use a stunt person i'm assuming that they just did like whatever best uh, was 
she could best understand from her dance training, from Dancing with the Stars, because most of it was very much the wrestler picks her up and swings her around. Like, there's a move called the Flying Head Scissors that, like, she did, and she did better than most trained professional wrestlers that you can think that you can think of or that know. And then she did this move called the, the Irish Whip, where you grab someone by the arm and you fling them against the ropes. And she did that very much like a, a 1980s Southern wrestler. Um, but I was very impressed by Candace Cameron, Candace Cameron's performance here. He was. Like, he, he mentioned it. Yeah, like... He's like, that's not a stunt double. That's not a stunt no. <laughs> He was like, she's actually okay. <laughs> she's not bad. Like, granted, I'm sure she couldn't wrestle an actual match, but... That was maybe the best celebrity performance in a wrestling ring I've ever seen. And I'm a big wrestling nerd, so I would know. But I kind of want... I'm, now I'm kind of wondering why they didn't do anything with WWE. Because they love doing like celebrity tie-in bullcrap. And, and if Candace Cameron can fucking wrestle, then let her wrestle. I'm sure she probably doesn't want to. But throw her a bunch of money. I would love to see Candace Cameron at WrestleMania after seeing that. She is more athletic than half of the actual wrestlers. So congrats, Candace. You're actually good at that shit. And again, bravo for not using a stunt person. That was that was actually impressive. So is there anything else we can dive into without um, well, diving too deep? We're about an hour in. Yeah, well, the first episode, um, like the one moment that actually didn't suck for me was actually DJ's little breakdown that she had in the bedroom with the baby when everyone heard her over the baby monitor. Uh, just because the kids were driving me crazy when we got home yesterday. And I was totally stressed out when you got home. And so I was like, DJ, I feel you right now. Like, being a mom is really difficult. <laughs> and the kids are crazy. And every day is stressful. And I feel you. Like, that was like the one moment in the episode where I was like, you know what? This doesn't totally suck. Well, there's another one also that you mentioned on Twitter. Not in the first episode. Not in the first episode. But, but... no, in the in the fifth episode, I was getting to that. Mm. You know, uh, we we find out that Stephanie can't have kids, and that hadn't been an issue for her until she moved in with DJ and realized that she liked being a mom type person, and she thought you know maybe she might want to have kids, but she can't actually physically have them, and I thought that. Um, a, it's always good to have infertility visible in the media because it's such a taboo subject for a lot of people. Um, but I also thought that it was really good that they did that with such a well-known character. Because, like, even if you don't watch Full House, you know who Stephanie Tanner is. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't watch Fuller House, you know who Stephanie Tanner is. Like, Stephanie Tanner has been, like, a Drake gif, you know? <laughs> like, it's a thing. Like, and... To have somebody who's as, like, well-known and popular with, like, people around my age, um, because, I mean, like, people our age are the people who grew up watching Full House, you know, and a lot of us are having kids and starting families and things like that, and for, you know, those of us who can't actually start a family that way, I think it's good to be able to see that represented through somebody that we can kind of identify with, um, so I thought that was good, and I actually read an interview yesterday, I think it was with Jeff Franklin, where they said he always planned on on having her not be able to have kids. Um, they teased that they might at one point um, explore other avenues for building a family. Um, but I thought that, like, as sad as it is for her, it's because, I mean, infertility blows, okay? I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Like, it's, like, the worst feeling in the world. Um, but I, I was glad that it was there, I guess. You know. Yeah. Um, now, uh, let me ask you... Um... And then I, because I, I don't want to comment on it, because it's as as much as it affects me, and as much as it's affected my life, it it's affected you a lot. Yeah. Deeper. <laughs> um, did it bother you that they didn't bring up a specific reason why? Um, not necessarily, because she didn't want to talk about it at all. Like DJ kept like pushing her about it. She didn't want to talk about it, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it. Um, which was why I'm glad they did actually mention it, just because um, again, there's a big taboo surrounding it. Um, and a lot of people are too embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it. Um, and for a lot of people, I know, like in my experience, I don't know a whole lot of people who have infertility. Um, everybody I do know with infertility has since gone on to have at least one child, except for me. <laughs> 
Um, well, I mean, I have kids now, but I didn't like birth them, you know. Um, and a lot of people when because I'm very open about mine, I don't try to hide it. I think it's important to talk about it because like, I've actually because I've talked about it on my blog like a gajillion times. And I've had a lot of people comment and tell me that they're they're happy that I did. It makes them feel less alone. You know, people have reached out to me about, you know, their own infertility and how it makes them feel. And that has been, like, by far the most rewarding part of blogging at all is the fact that I can help other people feel better about their situation. Um, but a lot of people who don't go through infertility don't know how to talk to someone who is. Um, and so it makes them uncomfortable to hear about it because they don't know what to say. Um, and some people you say stupid things and a lot of people, okay, just FYI, just for the most part, the best thing you can say is, I'm sorry, I'm here for you if you need to talk, you know, don't try to offer advice. Don't be like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so adopted and they got pregnant or, it's God's timing or, you know, put your legs up after sex. Nobody wants to hear that. Trust me. When you're going through infertility, you've already done everything everybody has ever suggested to you. Okay. Nothing works. You don't need to be told over and over and over all these things that are not going to do anything for you. The best thing you can do is just be supportive. Um, but a lot of people don't even realize that that's like an option, I don't think. Um, and so it didn't bother me that she didn't get into it. Um, I, I do hope that we learn more about her, her issues, whatever she's facing, um, as like the show goes on because they have already talked about other seasons. Um, <clears throat> and, and maybe they address it more in the other episodes we haven't watched yet. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I, I think that it would be really good for them to continue to explore that storyline. Um, and I think it would be very helpful for viewers to see that even people who don't go through infertility because again when you don't go through it you don't really know what to say most of the time and I think it's important that we let people know that it is a common problem um you know last I heard it might have been different it was like one in eight couples is affected by infertility and so the chances are even if you're not going through it you know someone who is even if they're not telling you um so understanding more about it how to be supportive. I think that's important. And it's important for those of us who are suffering from infertility because it feels so lonely sometimes. And like I mentioned, I'm the only person I know with infertility who hasn't been able to get pregnant at all. And I mean, we're not necessarily trying right now. Like we're not like preventing, but like we tried for four and a half years, you know? And at that point, even I'd had friends who had suffered themselves for like a couple years have like two kids in the time we'd been trying, you know, and it felt really, really lonely to be the only one left. And even when you know, you're not the only one going through it, it's helpful to actually know, like through seeing it, that you're not alone. Sorry. I, no, that's fine. I have a soapbox. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, this is, you have this to, I know we say silly things and, <laughs> I get way too angry, but you looked super bored. <laughs> no, I'm, I was I was trying to give you your space. I, it's not. Yeah. I'm not going to comment on it because it's as much as again it is our deal as a couple. You bear a yeah, lot. Yeah, I'm the one who doesn't work. Thank you, PCOS. No, no, I'm just saying. You, you, <laughs> I I know. Um, before we go, we we have two more things on the docket. Um, one of which is a usual thing. The other one is something I wanted to bring up that I forgot. So we act too cool for school about Full House, um, even though we do this podcast. We're not getting paid. <laughs> Bob Saget, I'm sure, got paid a decent amount of money to do this show. He couldn't be bothered to like, to like get into any sort of wardrobe. He couldn't be bothered to comb his hair. Couldn't be bothered to give a shit about the show. Clearly. Like, every, every line he reads, it's like he's making fun of the script. Every time he's on screen with someone else reciting a line, he's given this look like, why am I here? Ugh. Like, he didn't have to agree to it. He didn't have to. But yeah, they, they don't, like, he, he, again, Danny Tanner's character, he's the OCD neat freak, always has to have every hair in place. 
you know, he's normally in a suit or something nice. He's just Bob Saget. It's literally, they just plop Bob Saget into the Full House universe. There's a brief reference to his OCD. Otherwise, it's Bob Saget playing Danny Tanner. And it's very, very odd. And again, he didn't have to take the paycheck if he didn't want to do the show. And he clearly doesn't want to do the show. Like, every time, every time he's on screen, it feels like he's making fun of everything around him. And he's really cool, and that's really stupid. And yes, it is really stupid, but guess what? You took the paycheck. So fucking act like you want to be there. Like... I'm sure they can, I'm sure they paid him more money to do that than I get paid in a year. So get big girl britches on, dude. And also he, I think of all the filthy things that got in, he got the filthiest line in when he talked about putting his feather duster in his wife. Like, which I apparently, I didn't know this. Apparently that's a line from his stand up. So he's talking about, oh, you guys are here to see Danny Tanner. Well, let me stick my feather duster up your ass. Um, that being said, Alex, based on these six episodes of evidence that we watched last night, who to you so far in season one of Fuller House is literally the worst? <laughs> um, uh, like acting wise, character wise, what? Like... How we normally score it? Gosh, um. I don't know, like, I'm kind of leaning towards DJ, but I'm also kind of leaning towards Kimmy's daughter, Ramona. Yeah, she is a little <laughs> shit. Also, they, they very much got some sort of notes, some sort of note from Netflix, like, hey, this show is not at all culturally diverse, you gotta do something. And so, uh, DJ's, or Kimmy's daughter, Ramona, is, I don't know how to say this without sounding racist, because I don't mean it in a racist way. She's, like, hardcore... Hispanic, like every other line out of yeah, her, she some... speaks Spanish all the time. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if Kimmy actually understands what she's saying. Like, I know Kimmy took high school Spanish, and Kimmy was married to a Latino man. But like, does Kimmy Latino actually? Latino man. I said Latino. Oh, you said Latina. I said Latino man. Hmm. Um... Latino man. Sorry, <laughs> Brendan Fraser. <laughs> No, but, like, does Kimmy actually, like, retain any Spanish? Like, does she speak it fluently? Does she understand it? Like. Does she understand that her daughter is sitting there, like, insulting her? I don't know. But, yeah, like, it's it very much felt like, again, some old white guys were like, this show is not Spanish enough. Well, when they went to DJ's vet clinic, I almost, like, tweeted, oh, my gosh, it's a black person on Fuller House. Yeah, there's only one black person that's popped up so far. I'm yeah, but sure. I was trying to, to think about how many black people I had seen on Full House, and I can only think of, like, three. Four. Yeah. I can think of four. Yeah. But, like, no, there's a, the, this little, like, 12 year old girl gives a monologue about how this family is, like, so white that they eat vanilla ice cream and watch Frozen and. While dressed like polar bears and drink milk or something. Yeah. And, like... and, like, that felt very, again, that felt very much like a white, a middle aged white dude trying to be like, haha, see, they're the problem, not me. Maybe Donald Trump was a writer. That's another thing. Okay, so Full House <laughs> is the most Republican fucking show ever. For it's, real. It's about and upper... it's like helmed by Candace Cameron. Yeah, it's about <laughs> upper middle class white people living in San Francisco, making enough money to own a house. And an up a baby stroller. Yeah. And yet the first episode has two Donald Trump d d digs. What the hell? You again can't you can't bake your cake and eat they're, it. They're too. probably Ted Cruz supporters. Well, the first Donald Trump joke was eighty yard in because if you watch the kid's mouth, that's not what he said. That was it was dubbed in later. Yeah, and they tried to say it wasn't. Mm, it was like it, clearly it was because if you watch the kid's mouth, that's not what he said. So I'm curious what the original joke was. Um, that being said, I'm going to probably go with. I'm 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 gonna go with Kimmy Gibbler, cause she just assumed they wanted her to move in with them, and then she like wrecks by them moving, and she kind of wrecks uh, the Jackson boys' life. Because... Yes, because Ramona does not feel comfortable sleeping in Nikki and Alex's nursery, which for some reason has gotten like a gajillion times smaller. 
Yeah. Uh, and so Gigi's like, hey, you can have your own room and Jackson can move in with Max. And Jackson is not having that at all. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Kimmy Gibbler. She's a shitty parent. She forces things. And she doesn't realize that she's just setting up her daughter getting pregnant at, like, 16. Like, she is, like, a really bad parent. Like, and they actually, like, reference that at one point. Because when um, Jackson and Ramona both get suspended from school. Because Ramona hates being there. And Jackson causes a distraction to get her out. But they get caught. And so they both get, like, a three-day suspension or something. And, um... Kimmy decides that her punishment will be to get Manny Petties on the way to go visit her friends at her old school. And Gigi's like, dude, you suck at parenting. And Kimmy's like, well, I feel guilty because I've like ruined her life. And to me, it just really summed up what their friendship is about, which is DJ saying, Kimmy, you're dumb and wrong. And Kimmy being like, okay. Like that's their entire friendship. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but with that, we're going to head out. Next week, we'll be back to the normal schedule. We'll be back to season four of the OG Full House. Um, and we'll, like like I said before, we will get to this in actual episode review form after we're done with the original series. Um, if there's a season two and we haven't gotten to Fuller House by the time that it's on, I'm sure we'll do something like this again. Um, uh, and if you would like some more insights, you can check out our Twitter accounts. If you go back to Friday the 26th, uh, we were both live tweeting as we watched. And I'm sure if we end up watching again before we'll, this We'll pod, live tweet some more. Yeah. So it, this might be a case where you're listening to our thoughts after you read our tweets in the future that are not watching up. I don't know. But yeah, this is the first six episodes of Fuller House. We'll get back to it in a couple years. Um, but thank you all so much for listening. Thank you so much for helping us crush our one week download record this past week. Um, and hopefully it goes up from here because we're actually doing a Fuller House episode this week. That's what people actually want to listen to for some reason. Uh, so that everywhere you look, there is crippling nostalgia that I don't have a punchline for. You are still there, you are alone. Light is waiting to carry you.